Hi, this is Thomas from Apex Game Tools. In this video, we're going to look at how you can connect um, different floors uh, in a scene using portals. As you can see here, we have uh, a scene with two floors. We have a ground floor and we have a second floor up here. And then we have a staircase that connects the two. Now, as you may also know, um, Apex Path does not support overlapping geometry if um, we have different levels overlapping the same point um, in one grid. So we have to use portals to connect two grids. So for that reason each of the floors have their own grid. Uh, as you can see here we have a grid on the ground floor. It extends upwards just below the second floor. As you can see we have this set at an upper boundary of 4.9 which is just 0.9 below the upper floor which is at 5 and then we have the upper floor grid which extends just below the ground so that it actually gets hit by the ray casting and then it extends just the default 10 above. So basically the two grids are stacked up just on top of each other. Now to connect the two we then have uh, this portal down here on the staircase and as you can see um, the two uh, portals are placed just next to each other. The upper portal here is then in on the second floor, um, so it's inside the second floor grid, whereas uh, the lower portal is on the f uh, ground floor grid. Now you could of course connect the portals with um, the second portal at the ground level down here at the start of the staircase. Um, but it's actually better to place them as close to each other as possible um, because what we've used here is just a portal action called none which means that the portal itself doesn't do anything um, the movement is still controlled by the normal steering it simply just connects the two grids so if you place them uh, far apart um, you will get some unwanted behavior if you um, set a destination on the staircase itself. So let's look at how the solution works and the challenges that you will face when you um, implement this. Um, so now we'll just leave it as it is now with um, what I just explained and we'll see how that works in practice. So I'm going to start the level and I'm going to select my unit and I'm going to just give it a destination which is upstairs. So it will start moving up the stairs and that worked just fine. And now I'm going to move it downstairs. And now we'll see a problem because now our unit is actually floating in space. Um, so why is this happening? Well the problem is that the unit is now on the upper floor grid which means that it will um, uses the upper floor grid's height map and that height map doesn't really have a height at this open area so it will just assume that the height is where the unit is which means that the unit will not get a proper height setting and our unit does not have gra it, uh, the rigid body doesn't have gravity enabled as you can see here so it will just stay uh, flying obviously this doesn't work um, now, of course, we could just enable gravity, um, but then we'll have another problem. Because with gravity enabled, as you can probably imagine, um, when the unit needs to move up slopes, um, it will struggle because the gravity will actually work against it. So as you can see, it struggles uh, to get up the stairs. Um, and obviously, that is also not what you want. So, in order to fix this uh, limitation, um, we actually need to do a little trick. So, I've created something called a gravity switch. Um, we'll look at what it does in a second in detail. Um, but basically, it simply switches on gravity when it's needed and it switches it off again when it's not, no longer needed. Now you can have gravity on or off on your unit, whatever you, you want as the default, uh, it will switch it to the appropriate value. Um, 
So what did we do? Did we? S I think I had it on now. Yeah. So we have gravity on. Uh, let's see the scene with the gravity switch. So now I can move my uh, unit up the stairs, and when it enters, you can see it switches gravity off momentarily, and then it switches it back on to what it was. And this will make the unit move um, as expected. And it will do the exact same thing if you wish to have gravity off. Um, it will just do the exact same thing. It will simply just revert to uh, not having gravity as the default. Um, so when it moves down the stairs, it will switch off gravity again when it reaches the bottom. So basically that's it. So it's it's sort of a hack, um, you could say, to achieve the desired functionality. And this is basically only used if you need to do stairs. If you do elevators or other types of portals, you will not run into this problem. But for staircases, this height, ma uh, height map issue um, basically uh, requires you to to do this. All right. Um, so I'll just show you quickly what this uh, gravity switch does. I mean, this is not something that is uh, part of Apex Path as such. It is part of the examples because you may want to change this um, to fit um, your exact uh, implementation. Um, but as you can see, it has a gravity height, which basically controls when gravity is uh, enabled. Um, so if the unit is above four, it will be enabled on entering the trigger, uh, otherwise it will be disabled. So you would obviously, when you build up um, higher levels, you would need to switch this to a higher uh, value um, as the floors go up. So let's just look at it real quick in um, the code editor. Um, so as you can see, it's simply a mono behavior. Um, controlling the trigger. So once the unit enters the trigger, it will, well, of course, first check if it has a rigid body, otherwise it doesn't really make sense. Um, and then if it does, it will simply lock this unit as being inside the trigger. It will then toggle the gravity onto the appropriate value. And then once it exits the trigger, it will um, set the gravity back to whatever it was once it entered the trigger. So it's it's pretty simple. It is in the examples project under the miscellaneous folder called Gravity Switch. So you can grab it from there and you can use it uh, and you can just um, drag it into your project and use it as is or you can modify it uh, any way you wish um, to get the functionality you want. Um, now just one last thing I would like to show you. Um, as I mentioned initially, um, this limitation that we do have uh, in Apex Path with overlapping geometry, um, I'm just going to show you what that means. Um, so if I start the game again, and I'm just going to go to my level one, and I'm going to switch my grid into accessibility mode in order to see where I can actually walk on my ground level. Um, and switching into scene view, as you can see, due to the inability um, to actually have two points at or two heights at any given point, as you can see, the area below the staircase here is not walkable to our unit. So we you cannot have a unit AI units moving in this area. So that is obviously a limitation that you will need to take into account um, when you create your levels. Alright, that was it for multi-level geometry. See you in the next video.